Let, let's go to the other exceptional case that uh, uh, you uh, have, have has been taking your time over the past several months, and that's General Motors. Um, now, in this instance, uh, you you fashioned, if not in record time, certainly in, in remarkable time, I mean, what, the biggest ever reorganization, right? Or one of them. I mean, was this a relatively straightforward exercise? No, it, uh, it, when we got to finally doing it, it was pretty straightforward. Getting to that, to that point in time where we had convinced the government that this was doable uh, was very difficult. Uh, first place, when you have an organization like old General Motors, which was 100 years old, uh, decision-making becomes very difficult because everything is done by committee. And uh, sometimes committees don't act quickly. And uh, committees like to retain optionality. If, you, if your theory is retaining optionality, you never make a decision. Uh, essentially, what happened to GM, it was also a victim of Lehman because the credit crunch killed it. And the, the thought of GM was, well, we'll always be able to borrow because we have a lot of free assets. Uh, by time we got to December of 08, there was no credit availability. And basically, uh, around Christmas time, GM was out of cash. So the first loan from the uh, Treasury was December 31, the $13.4 billion. Without that loan, GM would have we would have closed, closed down. And uh, the systemic risk of a GM going down and a Chrysler going down, although I think Chrysler, they were prepared to let it go if necessary, <laughs> of a GM going down, the entire automotive industry was in danger. So you're talking about Michigan, Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, and all of those states which really supported the industry. Uh, there would be cataclysmic results and the Treasury was looking for a way to do this, and the problem was that speed was essential. 